Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. thank you for joining me, let's play some more Con of Cons in Crusader Kings 2. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and do it, we're gonna create all of these kingdoms. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'm gonna create the Kingdom of Perm, I don't really care if the north is still proper. I'm gonna, we're just gonna move in that direction. So the Kingdom of Perm should be owned, ideally, by a Duke of Perm. We've got a Duke of Perm here. Um, he owns... He's the High Chief of Perm, and he owns these two. I can't see his flag because he is buried underneath the vassals. We're going to raise you to the rank of King as a Vice Royalty. King of Perm. Makes you independent with two provinces and you own land down there. Excellent. How beautiful. But eventually, perhaps it'll work out alright. We won't be able to raise our troops and teleport them around quite as easily. Which means that getting the war going is going to be harder. It's also going to be a little bit more annoying to deal with adventurers and things. But altogether, we're still going to have the same number of troops. Is the Khan of the South currently in a faction? He's not. So let's just do nothing for now. My former spymaster had continuously done that. We have this upcoming adventurer coming soon. To a theater near you. Nobody wants to kill him. 71% plot power, and Gifts won't get us any higher, because he's just some jerk in another realm. We're no longer gluttonous. That's good. It's a good trait to lose. It'd be cool if there's a visual indicator. Like, I can see that they can't loot, right? Because they're burning down a holding. But it'd be cool if there's a visual indicator for all provinces... All, all holdings in a county being um, burnt down. Like having every province in flames. Aside from having to just go and look at it. This is why I don't like having small vassals. And I have lots of small armies that I need to pay attention to and merge together instead of just having a big 30 stack that I can... Fall of Belgrade. Good. Our sieges will continue. Get those 853 troops up there, they are very, very weak. Send these guys up there. And you, sir, where are you rebelling? Down here in the south. Well, I don't believe I raised the south. I did not. And these provinces have pretty good supply. I don't even need leader. Just move over. Oh, we won't be able to catch you, will we? Oh, man, that attrition. We should just split it in half and only send half. Alright, battle number one against the, re the rebels. He's retreating up to there. Would have been nice if he retreated to our own territory. Getting some good loot coming in from all this. Ah, uh, more Catholics. Ah. Annoying. Yeah, I guess we'll stay together then. I can't split them in half a little bit more cleanly. Alright. Hey, rebellion has ended. Where's this one now? It's over here. Interesting. And there's the host invasion. You're starting in the south. Excellent. We'll have an army for you. It will be ready. We will duel. Okay, you're personally held territory. We've got... All of this siege, I need to siege these three to wrap up that war. So when these three are done, we move these three up here. There's the host.
Time for us to lead some troops, I think. Let's go. Let's duel. A duel to the death. <laughs> Reminds me of Mitch Hedberg. It's gonna be a fight to the finish. That's a good place to end. <laughs> He's a funny guy. Too bad he died. It's true. He didn't know that, I'm sorry. But it is true. He's dead. 22nd. And we'll be there on the 23rd. Maybe we catch that one, maybe? Ooh. All of a sudden we have 19,000 up here. Okay, spread out a little bit. It's hard to say. You know, I bounce back and forth between feeling like assault is better and then just allowing the levy to replenish. Oh, that's going to be brutal. Um, let's get rid of... Here. Combine again. Let's get rid of 10,000 of them. Try to reduce that attrition down a bit. Wow. A Sunni uprising in the province that we're standing in with an army. But now they're retreating to Bori. Alright, I guess we'll just... Since we're here, we'll go deal with that. We raise some more retinue. Yes. This is exciting. I'm, I'm really excited because we're, start, we're finally starting to get the retinue nearly to the cap. And the cap is it's pretty damn huge, actually. Alright, that is a fairly sizable army. Which wh which province are you actually in? And we're now fighting the Grodnian Peasant Revolt, primarily. Awesome. Like that army just needs to stick together. All right, one more fight here, maybe two. Of course you would, but you've got all of them in a single flank, which means you're probably going to lose. Especially when we get to the melee phase, we'll get a 270% damage boost on both sides. Equal numbers, but in a single flank is not smart. You will lose hands down almost every time. Alright, you're gone, and give me your money. Alright. Got these ones. I said you needed to go here. What is this, uh, Catholic Uprising? I guess we should take care of that. Winter Attrition. Causing some issues. Did you get any money? 300 ducats. Cool. We'll take them. Any other prisoners that we can get rid of? Continue to fuel the war chest. Banishment. Ransom. Murder. I mean, whatever we can, really. Okay, so you two are going to these two. But we also need the top holding here. I don't need to worry about taking back the barony that they siege. I just need to get the castle. So I think we're almost in a position where, assuming we have 100% war score or, or enough for them to surrender, that we can end this war with Poland. Just need to wait on a few more sieges. The Army of the South is not raised. But there's not much we can really do about it. Or sorry, it was raised, but we're not using it for anything. 
Had I known that it was going to cause so many issues trying to do the cons of the north, south, east, west, I would have just gone with the Jour kingdoms from the beginning. I guess that's the direction that they want you to play in? I don't know. It seems... silly to me. Oh, look at that. It actually sieged that back first. Not really what I wanted, but okay. Okay, we're hunting the bear that our initial character couldn't kill. Now, I have read on the forums a bit. Oh, damn, he's going to take that back. You spend weeks in the wilderness searching for any trace of your prey, but to no avail. However, you find you rather enjoy being out in the wilds. All this daily physical activity it makes you feel stronger. 20% chance we become strong. We did not. We are wounded. Uh, maimed, still. You return to court. A hunt for the elusive bear seems fruitless. So I've read in the forums about it, right? And, uh... Unfortunately, when you do find it, you can't kill it. <laughs> you just don't, It's just like, I can't kill such a majestic animal. Kind of like, uh... Kind of like going on a grand hunt used to be, where the white stag... After 100 years, the continent of the north is no longer considered a sure part of empires. Great, now it's gonna get all messed up, isn't it? Because I, I did this for 100 years, evidently. So we have until 1453. 100 and some years. Should be more than enough time, really, but... As, as much difficulty and reconquest as we've had to do, might not work out. What am I saying? I'm sure we'll do it, but... It's an ambitious adventurer. Prince of Leon. Twelve percent plot power. You know what I should do? I should just look up which patch it was that added in adventures and just just not use that one. Which DLC? I hate adventurers. I find nothing entertaining about them at all. It'd be one thing if you could be an adventurer. But the only people that can actually, like, be an adventurer are the Norse on their planned invasions. But other than that, the adventurer is solely a anti-world conquest, anti-player expansion, anti-player fun mechanic. It's just, I ugh, hate everything about it. Alright, I think we're good here. Welcome back to the realm. So, the Kingdom of Poland, yeah, we're gonna create you, I think. That's the direction you want me to go in, game, then I'll do it. And we will find, uh, let's just find a random character, really. Hey, we have to start off by landing you, so we'll give you something in there. And now we're going to just make you the King of Poland. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We are over our domain limit, which means we must have held on to a province up here. This is part of Lithuania. We can hold on to it for a moment, because I want to give it to the king of Lithuania, which we're going to create. Khan of Lithuania. Okay, yeah, your personally held titles extend up to here. We've already sieged some. Send you up that way, just to get that part started. We might as well finish this town, since we've nearly done most of it. I just see that we got an achievement. Maybe we did. As a ruler of a non-Indian culture, conquer a king or emperor tile in England. I don't know if I did that just now or at some point in the re recent past, but yeah. 
Independence faction. This is fun. Alright, so... Domain too big. Raise levies. Large feudal tax. I think we might want to just finally lower feudal taxation a bit. They're not even paying that much, you greedy bastards. 270 ducats a year. Basically financing the retinue. Alright, well, let's turn off uh, feudal taxation for now. So we get the, um, the realm stabilized and get everything where we want it. We can change it again in five years. Bump it right back up. So that should help out quite a bit with opinion. Our lowest opinion vassal is now at... Well, our lowest king is now at, at, at 28. Mostly due to... Domain too big and raised levies. And the fact that our character is arbitrary. Okay, we've got a con of Y. We'll rename you back to normal. And then we'll see what we can do to actually make you like us a little bit. How much is it going to cost to gift you? 100 bucks? Seems reasonable. Let's try to get that little rebellion thing down a bit. We just lose a battle. No, nope. that was the sound of my army being moved. Okay, they're similar. So the thing is that once the army actually does combine, it's just as big as it would be if we had the, the Khan of the North, South, and West. We have a lot of men. We're not going to have any real issue, I think, with shortage of troops. It's just easier to manage, like, three vassals. Did we inherit another title? I think we did. Or perhaps it was... Ah, okay, here, Poland. I don't want that. You can have that. We inherited the, the barony, the subholding. Khan of South, are you in the faction? No. And you are causing problems. That is the sound of a lost battle. Ah, okay, so they finally responded to my raiding parties, which I've forgotten about for a few years. An army of 6,000 men. Well, as long as we reinforce and fall back to the same position, they won't likely cause us any problems. Fruitlessly scouring the countryside, you come upon a small cottage in the wilds. As you knock, an old crone opens. When she sees you and your hunting party, she crack cackles eerily and says that she has a powerful potion that will make you a stronger hunter. Yeah, totally. You drink the potion down, soon you start to feel all queasy, and then you pass out. As you awake, you have a strong headache and no desire to continue your hunting expedition. The old crone has disappeared. Your guards don't seem to know how or where to. Excellent. Perhaps something bad will happen. Okay, Con of the North, we need to continue to improve with you. Our realm is so messed up. You have returned to the court. We failed our mission. 90% war score. Basically spent the last two videos doing nothing but fighting peasants. And bringing back countries into the realm that should have stayed in the realm in the first place. Nice. If it wasn't Iron Man, I would probably be tempted to just force them in using console commands because it's pretty stupid that they leave in the first place.
But the other thing is that by creating all the kingdoms, we can make that problem not happen. Okay, uh, we'll do the same thing we did before. We'll find a random guy who is high in stewardship, and we will grant him something in the du jour kingdom of Lithuania. And then we will turn him into the Khan of Lithuania. Alright, cool. I'm going to take a break here. I do look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.